2020 Packers Inception delivery. Bleach spray down. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, my name is Ben. Uh, we're back in the garage today to do a project that I've been meaning to do for my IS-250 for the longest time. The IS-250 has a direct injection engine. It doesn't have the port injection like uh, the 350 does. So what happens over time is you get a lot of carbon buildup on the top of the head. So to prevent that or to help prevent that, you have to put in an oil catch can on the PCV valve. To help um, reduce that, you catch most of the oil through this canister before it gets into the engine and into your intake where it's going to gum up the top of your head. So I recently um, picked up this on eBay. I think I paid like $23, $24 for this guy. I picked up a PCV valve. It's an OEM PV PCV valve. Here's the part number on it. Um, so that one was like five or six bucks. It was pretty cheap. I bought it from an online dealer that sells on eBay. And that's pretty much all you really need. But me, I want to dress up the engine a little bit and I didn't want this ugly blue hose or just any kind of non-OEM looking hose. So I picked up one of these um, steel braided dress kits. So all it is is just, it comes with some fittings and then the steel braids that you just wrap around that hose. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna measure how much I need of this hose. I'm gonna figure out where I'm gonna mount this canister so it looks OEM or it looks OEM as possible and then you know put the hose the steel braided hose over this guy however long i need it and uh, make it all look pretty and nice so stay tuned so this canister here comes with basically all the fittings you need that bracket i was saying earlier that it comes with it's got the pre-drilled holes here so you can mount the bracket on it comes with an extra set of nozzles or nipples that you can swap these out for depending on how big of a hose you use and then the PCV valve is pretty basic. I mean, it's, it screws onto the valve cover on the car. It comes out with this little fitting. You know, you put a hose on it and it's pretty good, right? So basically what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be bypassing that hose that originally went into there. You're gonna go, it's gonna go into here. And then from there, you're gonna run that hose to here back onto the engine so everything passes through this guy. And this thing's got the little window thingy to see how much is full. The bottom side has actually got a little nut so you could take this thing apart and clean it. I think the top comes off too so you could open it up. I think I saw some guys online, they actually had a hack where they opened it up and they put like some steel wool or something in it to help catch some more of the grime and stuff instead of just having oil in there that might have potential to come back through the PCV. I'm not going to do that because I'm just probably just going to periodically monitor this thing and open it up and see what's inside to make sure it's clean. Over here on the dress up kit, I mean this dress up kit was like 30 something dollars. It actually cost more than this whole setup over here, but I'm kind of OCD on stuff that, making stuff look good. So I wanted to make sure I had that hose looking good and I ordered the whole kit cause you can't just order just you know, that hose. So I just ordered it. I probably won't use the rest of it. I'm just gonna use what I need over here and then probably just scrap the rest or leave it laying around if I ever have to use it for another project. So we're inside the engine bay now. So that is the PCV valve right there that you have to get to. As you can see, it's right under this fuel area right here. So to get down into there, you have to have some kind of wrench that can reach it where you could turn it, or you could have one of those kind of like extension offset wrench with a socket and an extension uh, on a ratchet. I'm gonna see what I can do with just a regular wrench also in here, you could tell there's not much room up here to fit this canister. I'll show you right here. I mean, <laughs> there's not much space to fit a canister this big. Most of the places, most of the guys that I see end up putting it right about here. That's probably where I'm about to put it. I'm about to find a way to get some, a bracket that looks OEM and, and I can mount it so it doesn't touch anything, but that's probably where I'm gonna end up mounting this baby. Uh, ran into a little snack foo, so this, hose that they came with the canister wasn't long enough because what you need is you need a hose you basically need two hose pieces that are the length of that spot over here all the way down to there which 
probably wasn't the intent when they originally shipped you this small section because most people mount it a lot closer to the PCV valve. The way our cars are, you got to mount it down there. So I'm going to have to make a run to Home Depot, pick up some hoses. And in addition to picking up that hose, I need to pick up an, a, another connector piece because at this end of the hose needs to connect to the other end of the hose over there. So that way you could bring the air back into that hose. So I ran down the Harbor Freight, picked up some of this air hose. It's a remnant for like six bucks. So it's a minimum of eight feet and it's up to 15 feet of whatever was left in I guess their manufacturing. But it's the perfect size. The one the what I was looking for was basically a 3 8 inch, which is the same as the hose that came with that can. So that's perfect size for all the nipples and everything we have. So I'm gonna just cut up what I need out of this. Uh, I ended up having to go over to Lowe's to pick up this kit. It was like six bucks, but it's got my fittings that the connector fitting that I needed. I thought they had it at Harbor Freight, but they were out of stock at my Harbor Freight. It was only like two dollars and fifty cents at the Harbor Freight for this size, the 3 8 inch. Uh, all they had was quarter inch, which didn't fit. So while I was at Lowe's, I picked up some washers too because I needed some extra washers to fit that bracket that came with this uh, can. So I've got it test fitted in there with that bracket. What I ended up finding, I used one of this bracket I had from Ikea. It's one of those safety brackets that keeps the shelf from falling over on the kids. I have a bunch of those laying around for the kids here and all my shelves I have. What I ended up doing was I took off that 10 millimeter that holds the reservoir and I actually, I was trying to put it on top with a washer but it was, the, the bolt was too short so I ended up just basically tucking that bracket between the the reservoir and the bracket that it, it mounts onto so it holds pretty well and it's in there and it's in the spot I need it to be for now work around some clearance with the fan motor and then that little tube that comes out I could flip that tube but I think that it might be too close to the pulleys back there so I, I don't want to keep that tube on that side I want to keep it on this side and at least I can see it on this side also so I'm gonna to try to leave it there uh, and then I can actually take apart all these screws around here and then clock the circle over and get the tubes to come out over here so that way it's not blocked by this engine cover and that should work so I'm going to take that apart and see where I can fit it and then that bracket I just have to drill an extra hole to get some more screws in there to hold it better. So I got the whole thing in place where I needed to get it to be. Got all the clearances. It's clearing the fan motor, which was the most important thing. I didn't want it hitting that fan motor. It's going to clear the pulleys back here with about an inch to spare. It's got this little hose right here that's resting against. It's not really resting, but if it moves, it will just hit the fan shroud, which is not a problem. Back over here, you can see the bracket that I made. Basically, it's mounted to that one 10 millimeter. I found some screws, some old screws I had for my lip and stuff that fit perfectly. So I, I did that. I just made a couple of new holes and I made some filing adjustments to that IKEA bracket to get it to fit perfectly and get all the clearances I needed. So this is pretty much the position I'm going to have it in. I'm going to be running the tubes and all that stuff now. I ended up deciding to put that piece of uh, steel wool inside there to act as a filter. In addition, I'm going to add a little screen on top because this cap, you know, this is what you kind of get for a cheap eBay, Amazon, $25 stuff. There's really no filter screen or anything that keeps anything from kind of blowing back. So I'm going to actually cut my own filter screen in, in a circle and try to fit it around this cap along with the gasket before I screw it down. So I create a, yeah, a little filter screen up here to keep the steel wool from sucking back up. So the steel wool is just going to sit inside the can and absorb the oil and kind of keep the oil and sludge down there so it doesn't suck back up when the PVC valve pulls back through and the, the vacuum pressure. Here's a better look at that bracket that I made out of the IKEA bracket. So basically this bracket came with this particular can and that IKEA bracket I just basically put it right there. I mounted it with that lip screw. Those were part of the OEM lip where you cut the hole, drill the hole into the bumper and you use it, but I never did that. I just used 3M tape. And then this one up here, the L part mounts to the car. 
on that 10 millimeter. I gotta kind of straighten it out a little. It's kind of getting bent from me taking it in and out, but I'll bend that straight again. And uh, the one thing with these screws that came with this particular one, it came with two washers, which spaces it out from the can, but then you need to add a third washer on the outside because this screw's a little bit too long. And then over here, I'm gonna be using that piece of steel wool I said I was gonna put inside to absorb the oils and then this aluminum screen that I had. This is what I use. If you saw one of my uh, lip repair videos, I used this as a kind of a reinforcement behind there when I was using that plastic weld to fix that crack. So I'm gonna just cut a piece of that, put it around here, bolt it down, and then just trim it with a razor. I decided to order a crow foot 19 millimeter to get that PVC valve out. I didn't want to deal with it and bust my knuckles. It was only like six or seven dollars on Amazon. At the same time, I decided to pick up an oil separator too from Amazon. This was like eight bucks to go with my whole setup that way. The oil collects in the can and then it flows through and then there's a secondary collection on its way back to the valve cover. And luckily it's perfect because now I have threaded pipe to get you know, get the hose, which I bought air hose to use as vacuum hose or heater hose. So that's a perfect setup there. And then I'll end up using a little adapter on this side. Had a little union adapter there, uh, NTP union adapter. And then, you know, that uh, connector kit that I had before. So that should be all the stuff I need to get that to fit on the car. So now I just got to measure everything out. Uh, run the steel braided hose through this guy to make it look pretty and get it all set up. So you see this is uh, 13 years worth of carbon and oil buildup on this PCV valve right here that I just took out. Here's what the new one looks like and it's clean. This one when I shake it, it sounds like it's working fine. So, and then this one, so it's still working fine but you know I figure my car has like 100,000 miles or 95,000 miles on it and it's been 13 years, might as well replace it. I got the hose is all pretty much cleaned up. I got everything installed like I liked it. Hose kit is not as great uh, as I thought it would be. Uh, th these little end caps suck. Wish they would have had more of this smaller end caps. I had to rig some bigger end caps, but even the way they fit sucks. Good from far, far from good. Anyway, so if you look back there, I got, that's the connection to the original line. I've got the PVC valve connected there. Excuse all the wrap, the steel braid wrap there. It, uh, I didn't have any more ends to put on there, so I just kind of rigged it so nobody can see it back there anyways. Um, I did in, you know, I put that inline filter right here so it's working there. Got everything installed down here. I zip tied it so it's nice and sturdy. That way it doesn't shake too much and move too much down here to hit anything, which was where I was having the problems with clearance. So. All the clearances are good now. I, there's a little bracket right here for this harness. I use that to basically secure that part. And then up here, I just zip tie them together. They, they are resting against the brake lines, but the brake lines have a little bit protective coating, plastic coating on them. So that shouldn't be an issue with these. And then it's sitting right on top of this hose. So 
overall, everything is nice and clean. I'm going to put everything so back. I was under the engine now. working on this. I noticed that there was some oil building up around here. So this is the breather valve for the intake. So from the valve cover into the intake. And all it does is just breathes air from the valve cover, which is probably full of oil and other greases, into your air intake. So your engine is actually sucking that oil and all that crap back through the intake. So I decided to order two new breather valves, one for the intake side and one for the valve cover side to put on here. It was like $10 on Amazon. I'm gonna install it. So those, uh, the little nipple on there is a 15 millimeter. It's very hard to find a 15 millimeter, so I found a 12 millimeter. That was a more common size. So I just ordered a two pack for like 10 bucks. I figured it might as well put it on both sides because um, the cap for that, you can only order them in like uh, bunches of 10 and it's like five or six dollars already so it's the same price as buying a freaking filter so I just buy a filter. Well I'm under here I wanted to show you guys something uh, so about three years ago I, ch I took I had to take apart this whole intake manifold to do my spark plugs and at the time the car was about 10 years old so a lot of these clips I was working on were very brittle so I had to actually rig a zip tie because I broke the clip you know, when I was undoing these because they were so brittle, so I broke that clip, put a little rubber gasket and a zip tie to kind of keep it locked in there. I had to do the same for the throttle body. The, that's the drive-by wire throttle body actuator, so I had to do the same there. And I think I had to do a couple of the injectors, um, the injector um, plugs down here when I was taking apart. The same thing happened to them. So that's a very common thing that will happen when you're doing the spark plugs on this car. Uh, these things are so damn brittle that any little misstep or movement or just kind of wiggling these uh, harnesses will snap the little plugs on them. So I got those two filters installed there. Uh, since I couldn't find the exact size of this uh, nozzle, which is kind of big, I had to order these ones that were a little bit smaller than that, so I kind of squeezed them in there. So right now they're they're holding pretty well. That I've got them past the little nipple, and I've clamped them down, so they're going to hold. I test fitted the cover, and the cover fits, so I'm going to put it all back together. With all the panels back on hides pretty much everything down here so you can kind of see the steel braided hoses coming out of the side here and then a little bit of it up there but overall it looks pretty clean nice install you know I've got with my little inline filter I've got enough room right there just to kind of see the whenever I need to during maintenance just to see if I'm collecting any oil up there so that's pretty sweet right there in that little spot but overall I like the install. It looked, turned out pretty good. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in for this episode on the, installing that oil catch can. You know, I was a little bit extra with all that extra hoses or the braiding and all that. Uh, if you were going to do this and you just went straight with the hose and whatever, it'd be a lot quicker, less mess like me. I wasted so much time trying to get that braiding right and getting all the fittings to fit right, but if you didn't use that, it'd be pretty quick. Um, you know, I did that breather valve thing. That's something that a lot of people forget about doing, which I think it's going to help. It keeps that oil in your uh, valve cover from going out and into your airstream back into the engine. So that probably prevents a little bit of the carbon buildup and all that stuff. But I want to thank you guys for uh, watching this whole episode all the way to the end. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like. Uh, subscribe to your channel if you haven't done so already. And uh, I'll see you guys next time on the next car video.